Back in the early 20th century, subway systems across Europe and America were growing at a rapid pace. More people than ever before were heading underground to get from A to B. But as more deep tunnels were built, a new problem emerged. Some of the underground stations had more than 100 steps. Imagine doing that every day during rush hour. It must have been so exhausting. Despite some stations being equipped with elevators, they had their limitations. A lift could only fit a certain number of people. It takes a while to wait for it to come up and down. Um, and obviously, being able to convey tens, hundreds, potentially thousands of people deep underground uh, at, at greater volume and at greater speed was a vital part of a deep level tube line working properly. If you've ever been through one of those few underground stations in London that still just have lifts as the only way, you'll know how miserable of an experience it is. You have to wait for ages to get in there and then when you do, you're all crammed in. And so that was the situation for everybody all the time trying to get the underground, not fun at all. So once the uh, tube railway started uh, getting used much more heavily, uh, the bigger stations, the more popular stations, needed a better way to get people down and up from there. But there was a new piece of machinery in the works that looks set to take commuters to new heights, the moving staircase. We don't know for sure who the actual inventor of the escalator was, so we can't pinpoint it on anyone in particular. But we do know that in the 1850s, a chap called Nathan Ames patented an invention for something called revolving stairs. Ames's patent showed plans for a vertical walkway with steps mounted on a continuous belt which would turn when operated. But of course, this was prior to the days of electricity, so in order to operate, it would have needed some kind of hydraulics or mechanical operation system, and as far as we know, no working prototype was ever built. Throughout the latter part of the 19th century, various designs and patents were submitted and prototypes showcased. We do know that there was uh, some kind of moving staircase escalator thing in Coney Island back in 1896, but as far as we know, it was more of a like novelty fairground attraction than an actual working escalator. It wasn't until 1900 at the Paris Universal Exposition that the idea of the escalator really began to gain attention on a global scale. Paris had a great world exhibition showing all the latest uh, inventions. And one of these that was displayed was a kind of flat escalator, what we'd now call a travelator, which basically people got on a sort of conveyor belt and were taken along without having to walk. You see people stepping on and stepping off and trying it out for the first time. It must have been so exciting to be one of the first people to try out this brand new piece of machinery. But the device that took the grand prize for innovation was Otis Elevator Company's escalator. Passengers were charged one penny to ride up and down the working model, resulting in thousands of people taking their turn on the motorized staircase. And it was this model that, well, gave birth to the escalator as we know it today. So an escalator is actually rather interesting. It's basically a conveyor belt, and it runs around two gears. Imagine two cogs, and the gear is run by an electric motor, and basically it goes round, round the gears. But obviously, it's an escalator, so it's tilted like this at an angle. At the bottom and top of the escalator, the stairs collapse, creating a flat platform for the user to get on and to get off. Soon after the Paris Exposition, Metro system bosses realized that the escalator could be the answer to commuters' woes and began installing them at their stations. The introduction of the escalator was really important to be able to convey large numbers of people deep underground. That technology really sort of transformed how commuting was experienced. <laughs> 